All right, in this video, I'm going to be providing a bit of an introduction to Topcat, and in particular, how to load the Pleiades data set you've been working with into Topcat, how to view the data, how to plot the data, and use good plotting practices to do that. And hopefully what you learn today will help set you up for later exercises using this program. So if you haven't already done so, I'm going to briefly review how to download the data set from Google Spreadsheets. So once you have this open, you can go to download and uh, comma separated values. You want this to be in a CSV format. And then assuming you didn't change the path, it should go to your downloads folder. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. So we just have the original one to work with. And then you'll want to open TopCat, however you have added it to your computer or however it's set up on your on the computer you're using. You'll become very familiar with this icon here. TopCat is represented by this animated yellow cat. So go ahead and open that. And then we want to, of course, load the data set into TopCat. So what you can do is click this folder icon, and then it'll open a new pop-up. From here, we know we have a CSV file, so we'll want to specify the format so TopCat doesn't have any trouble opening the file. Click CSV, and then System Browser, and navigate to wherever you downloaded the CSV file. Mine is in downloads. So go ahead and click that once and click open. And then TopCat will automatically load the data into the program. So first thing we want to do is click this grid here. And we see that we can view the, the table here with all of the, the data that is in the table. We want to eventually plot B magnitude versus B minus V colors. So to do that, we'll be able to actually add a new column in this data table just using this TopCat interface. But in order to do that, we have to first change the names of the columns. So right click B magnitude and click replace column. And then we can rename this to something that's a bit more conventional, something that TopCat will be able to recognize. That means that it won't have any spaces in it. So I will just write B mag and then click OK. And the title of the or the column header will change. We can do the same thing for V mag, right click, right, V mag or something else that you prefer, but again, don't add any spaces. Click OK. And then we can proceed to add our new column here. So right click in this empty space and click new synthetic column, and then give it a nice name. All right, BV underscore diff to indicate that it's the difference between the BMAG and VMAG. And then expression, we're going to be taking the B magnitude values and subtracting them by the V magnitude. So what we'll do is we'll type B mag minus V mag, just like that. And we can ignore these other uh, these other things here. Just click OK. And then you see that Topcat created a new column with all of these values, the B mag minus the V mag. And if you don't want it to be over here, you can actually just click and drag the column and put it over to the right or wherever you would like it to be. It could be here if you wanted. I, I'll just place it here. So from there, we can go ahead and click X. And then again, the thing that we're wanting to do is to plot the data. So to do that, we can click the plain plotting window, it's just about the central icon here on TopCat and the to toolbar up here. So click that. And then yet another pop-up appears. And currently what 
top cat is plotting is the B magnitude versus the B magnitude. But remember, we want B magnitude on the Y axis and B minus V magnitude colors on the X axis. So if we go down here, we can change what the X and the Y values are. For X, we want it to be B V difference. And then for Y, we want it to be B mag, just like that. And now that we have this, you might think that we're all set, but there are a number of tweaks we can add to make this a bit better, maybe more readable, but improved. If we go to subsets, we can change the color of the points, for instance. There are a number of default colors you can choose from, but you can also use a color wheel if you feel so inclined. You can be a bit fancier perhaps with how you choose the colors depending on what your preferences are, but try to choose something sensible and readable, meaning try not to choose white if you have a white background. Um, maybe don't choose something very bright like this. Maybe something like RGB is typically good, red, green, or blue, but you can be slightly fancier if you feel so inclined and choose something like magenta or purple. And then we'll also want to create a label for our data, which will become a bit more important later on. We can just write, this is the play, or excuse me, play a D's data set to something that represents the data, describes what it is, but also try to be concise. So maybe I'll just put Pleiades data here and then keep this box check marked for later on. We can also change some things about how the data appear here, how the data markers appear. So for shading, for instance, we can do something like translucent or transparent, but with translucent, you can sort of change the translucency or how visible the, the data are. And this is especially helpful if you have data points that are overlapping. You can sort of see areas where there are data overlapping compared to not, whereas if you have it all the way transparent, it's it's really not that noticeable if you have two or more data points in one, one area. So I, I try to keep it something like this for this type of data set. And then for the shapes, you can change the marker shapes to something like squares, or you can do pluses, triangles. I tend to like triangles and you can change the shape of them if you would like. Again, it's, it's really, dependent on what you think will best showcase the data and make it the best in terms of its readability, because the idea is that people will be able to glance at this and be able to immediately extract what you need from it, or at least what you're trying to convey with the data. So from there, we can say this is good enough. And then what we can do next is we can look at the axes. So if you go over here and click axes, you see that uh, the, the magnitudes are in order from lowest to highest values. But remember, magnitudes are at their brightest when the number is lowest. So if we want something from faintest on the bottom to brightest at the top, and the same over here for the B magnitude difference, we're going to want to flip the X and the Y axes like this. So we have the highest numbers on the bottom and the smallest numbers on the top for both of these axes. And then if we also want to try changing the range, we can do that. I'm going to ignore this point for now because the axes seem pretty good. But if you wanted to zoom in on something like this, that's this is where you would do it. And then you can also change the labels of the X and Y axes, maybe make them something a bit more descriptive, if you would like, or something that doesn't include an underscore, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that by unchecking these two boxes. We can change the X label to B minus V. And then we can change the Y label to B. And it should change those if I hit the enter button. And it does. So remember to hit the enter button, I guess. And then we can also change the font if we want. So we see that these are quite small, but we can change the font size a little to make them more readable. If we wanted to, we can also change the text type to something like LaTeX or plain or this, which really just looks like a bolder version of plain. I'll just keep it on plain for now. And then also notice that it changes the size of the the numbers on the x and y axes as well, which is good. And it'll also affect the title and the legend once we add it, as you'll see later on. And speaking of legend, we can do that now. So we go to legend over here and we can click show legend. And I'll create a key to represent what these markers are, what the data are. Remember that we created the play these data label earlier. That's This is where it'll show up. But maybe you don't want it to be outside of the plot. Maybe you want it to be inside. So what you can do is click location down here. And then instead of external, we click internal. And maybe you don't want it here because it's a bit too close to the data. Maybe you want it somewhere over here. So what you can do is down here where the rectangle is, you can click and drag it. And that'll change where the legend is located, which is quite neat, I think. Put it something like here, maybe a bit higher, again, depending on your preference, but your preference should probably not be over here that where it's overlapping the data. It should probably be more in a white space, something like this. And then, of course, we also want a title for our plot. So we go to click frame up here. And then over here, we click title. And what we can do is type V, B versus B minus V magnitude colors, something like this. And then click enter, or not click, but press enter or return on your keyboard. And this will show up. And that is about that. I think it looks relatively decent. It's displaying what we want it to display. And then of course, if we are satisfied with this and we want to save it for our records or to put it on our refrigerator, we can click this button up here. And then what it'll do is it'll save our plot to wherever we want. I will just go ahead and save it to my desktop and type myplots.png, but you should probably choose something a bit more a descriptive again, just so you don't find yourself with seven or eight myplots and not really know what they mean. So down here, click export plot and voila, it saves our, our plot down here. And there we have it. Very nice, I think. All right, let's go ahead and click out of this. You can either use this X here or you can use the, the typical window X. I'll just use this one here. And then when you're all set, you can go ahead and shut down TopCat. And to do so, just again, you can click this X down here or you can click this X over here. I'll do it this time and then shut down CopCat. Okay, that's that. Hopefully you learned a few tricks about TopCat and I assume that I will see you in the next exercise, whenever that might be.